I'm Rob Lucuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with Adina Menzel and Laura Veltz, who co-wrote the Oscar shortlisted song Dream Girl from Cinderella. Guys, firstly, congratulations on making the coveted Oscar shortlist. That's so cool. Thank you. Thank We're you very, very much. <laughs> were you expecting that? Like, was it a huge shock? Ah, oh, that's a yeah. trick question. <laughs> uh, um, I was hoping, but yeah. Um, well, just because it's just such a different creature for me because uh, usually I'm up there singing someone else's song and this time I'm you know there's just it was just such a gift to be able to write the song for a character that I'm playing and um, be on both sides of it and um, so yeah to just to be considered for this for this particular film and song um, having been given this chance from my director, Kay Cannon, is just the whole thing is is really wonderful. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It is definitely cool. So people who aren't aware, if you've been living under a rock, um, <coughs> Cinderella is writer-director Kay Cannon's bold new take on the timeless classic. It's got a dynamite soundtrack full of great covers like Material Girl and Rhythm Nation, but it also has some wonderful original music. This song, Dream Girl, um, written by the two ladies that we have here today. And I'm just wondering, Laura, um, you're well known, right, as an in-demand songwriter, including some of the best music to come out of Nashville. I'm just wondering how you end up in this place where you are writing for Kay's new Cinderella adaptation. I mean, you tell me. <laughs> no, I, I am so lucky and so grateful that it happened, you know, kind of fast and furiously. We share management and they threw me in there and I was kind of you know awestruck and excited and um it was delightful I mean I just feel so honored to have a platform to talk about something that I believe is really important and managed to be tucked you know beautifully in this little children's film which is kind of a bizarre opportunity you know it's way, a way of speaking to children in subtle ways and I just think it's addressing the kind of issues that I, you know, want to have in my catalog and to have my mouth saying in some way, shape and form. And this has been a dream. Uh, well, <laughs> but yeah. it has been, it has been a dream. It's been amazing. You're right. I, I want to delve a little bit more into the meaning behind the song because it's not what I was expecting. You see the, I think that I see the title dream. I think, okay, I, I know what I'm going to get here. Completely shattered my expectations. And I think a lot of the uh, music branch at the Academy probably felt the same way, which is why we're here today. Um, Adina, without um, being too hyperbolic, you're kind of musical royalty, okay? <laughs> Maureen, Maureen, Elphaba, Elsa, and now Vivian, right? So yeah. I really love this more complicated and empathetic version of this supposedly wicked stepmother trope. Um, and she's imploring Cinderella to bury her passions get her head out of the clouds mm. and kind of just get on with it, right? And I think that is, I've never seen or heard that before in a film like this. It's a circuit breaker for me in this film. We realise this Vivian woman, she's actually more complicated. She's not just the um, scary old Lady Tremaine. So I'm just curious, where did this come from? Where, where, did, this, where did the germ of the idea come from? She wanted to humanise the character and not do your typical... The, the archetypal character that we've seen a bunch of times. And in doing that, she gave us the freedom to really um, figure out this woman's soul and her pain and her wounds. And what I love about it is that, like you said, it exists in more than one level. So it's got a personal and universal, you know, there's the, when Laura and I wrote it and Laura can help you know, communicate this with me, you know, where I was really thinking from my character, this woman that has been held down, um, suppressed, oppressed, um, who's allowed her dreams to be shattered. And um, it's sort of the voice and the rage of, 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 of sort of the inner voice and the rage that a lot of us have, the, the number that we can do on ourselves when we get in our own way. And that was kind of what I've felt it was until we had written the whole thing and then I realized that so many people that were listening to it were also there was a way against uh, re, was there a way to rebel against the quintessential beautiful perfect person as well perfect princess um and so I love that it exists in so many levels 
Yeah, what about you, Laura? Um, I've been thinking so much about this, obviously, um, and it makes me think of one of my favorite quotes, uh, Stephen Sondheim's, careful the things you say, children will listen. Like, that is so epically intense, and systemic oppression works that way. If, if your parent tells you something, you're going to believe it, then you tell your child they're going to believe it, then they tell their children, and oppression just stays and stays. It's a generational hand-me-down. And this song to me is every voice at, collectively, every voice in our head. It's taking a turn on each doubt, like a doubt, doubt in your own head, just taking turns, this doubt, that doubt. And again, the, I, I don't know how we manage, but it's so beautiful to me that it's managed to be like tucked in a children's film. Uh, yeah. This important message that obviously Cinderella is arguing against which is the only way any of us are going to evolve is if our children say no to us essentially and that to me is like that's everything what else are we here to do if not acknowledge what's wrong with the world and try to change it and that to me is the most beautiful part of this is like every time I listen to the song I tear up just thinking oh my god I've said that to myself I know like not just women you know anyone in a disenfranchised setting Anyone who's oppressed can identify with the voice that says you can't, that you don't even acknowledge isn't yours. It's just a voice you heard on repeat from society, from your parents and man. And then I just, I was just texted Adina before we got together because I got all teary because the piano part at, at the end, I just, oh man, just the rage and the like acceptance the face, the facial expressions that she's making, like going back and forth from, I'm so good at this to, I can't be good. At, I can't be good at this. And like, you can see it in Adina's eyes. It just really makes for such a beautiful acting moment, which I think the song is wonderful, but if it wasn't performed by this woman, I don't know if um, it would have translated the same way. Yeah, I totally agree. This song's instrumentation is, <clears throat> is actually really unexpected. It's the rockiest song on the soundtrack, I think. <laughs> Um, which is cool. It's not something that I'm expecting. Uh, and then Vivian's pent up rage and disappointment turned to defiance and regret. And then we get that amazing, glorious piano solo after all that percussive stuff. And yeah, I, this is not the song you get in a family film called Cinderella. It's just something very unexpected. And congrats on kind of just flipping flipping the table like the real housewives of new jersey it's like no we're going to do something different here i felt um, like i feel yeah. like people you know always um connect me to these amazing songs in my career that i'm so proud of that are very empowering and uplifting and usually the characters are saying i can do it i'm you know um i'm realizing my power and but the truth is the reason why i've related so much to this character and then to wanting this song and then Laura being able to really help me realize it and having this undercurrent of the the bass and the bottom end and the and the the brassiness of it and and the rock and roll aspect of it is because because the real me is you know yes I'd like to be a role model to little girls and help them you know overcome their insecurities but a lot of times I am in my own way and um, I have felt unseen and I felt like people have said shit about me that's, you know, hurt. And um, and so I just related to, I think that even though it's set in a period piece um, that we feel that way, you know, so often when just people aren't recognizing who we are and our talent. And um, and so it's it was it's just such, so it was so wonderful when Kay actually picked our song and she didn't just pick it because I was, the actress she she saw she listened to some other songs that were written for it but it was a testament to Kay and also to 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 me really knowing how to really live inside something and understand the melody and how it connects and the lyrics to the emotional um flow and and dance that what I I really feel like I understand I know what I need to do to communicate what the character is feeling and because I'm a singer that's the first thing I think of and how I do how I communicate best and then when you have a collaborator like Laura who because everybody on this panel knows you can work with people and then it can kind of go south you know but when yeah. you work with 
one that realizes what you're hearing in your heart and in your mind and they make it come to life better than you could ever imagine you know it's just it's just whole thing's been such a great experience and it's just you know by being here with all of you that's awesome yeah that's so true and we've run out of time but really the lyric the world doesn't need another dream girl there's there's a lot of layers to that and I think from ultimately, I think we do. We all need another dream girl. And, I, and on that note, thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to bring you back shortly for our group chat. Thank, Thank you so much.